right now on Full Custom Garage. Master metal man Ian Roussel transforms a 1949 international work truck. The other times I pulled this off, there were cars. This is Big Bertha. <laughs> this is heavy duty. As the build gets rolling, Ian's client takes him to a top-notch truck show. After seeing the rigs at the truck show, I knew he had to take this all the way. He's very, very ambitious, and nothing's frightening to him. It is a little frightening to me. With the project on the line, Ian's got to get down and make it happen. I don't think Bill really wanted to go full bore with this truck, but my kind of crazy is contagious. My friend Bill's got a new project he wants to start. I've worked with him a few times in the past, and all of his stuff has been unique. I really can't wait to see what he's got. I have a roll-off truck I haul trash with for myself and for clients. I have several containers, boxes that I can leave at clients. They can fill them. I can then go do something else. The roll-off truck is super versatile. I can haul a tractor, whatever, on the flatbed. I can haul material if I'm building something for my property. So it's very, very versatile. I don't want to work full time at it, but it's fun for me the time that I get to do it. I like it a lot. Bill's into custom cars. He wants a custom rig. He wants to do something cool. What I want with the roll-off truck is something that's modern with all the modern conveniences that they have, the automatics, the air brakes, the power steering, all that, but looks old, the old cab. That's what I'm shooting for. I've done a lot of body swaps. This is nothing new to me. The only thing is that it's bigger. I've been thinking about this project since Ian did the panel truck that I have. It's a 63 Ford panel truck. I pulled a couple ballsy moves, and I think he respected me for that. I cut the car in half lengthwise because the donor vehicle was wider than the Falcon. He cut it right down the center, took that whole chassis down to nothing and put the Falcon right on top of it, basically widened the car six inches. In the end, that's trick. Nobody's got it, and that's why I did it that way. I've been wanting to do this truck project for a bit, and I've been getting pieces here, pieces there, parts. Some are real rough, and some will be usable. Bill wants to put together a modern roll-off truck with a 1940s cab. He said he's been collecting parts for a while, so I want to check out what he's got. He told me he had a chassis identical to this one with a good running motor in it, and he had a bunch of old trucks laying around also. He wants me to just come take a look at what he's got and make a decision to, to build him a cool truck. It's pretty clear that Bill's an optimist. I think that he thinks that I can do anything. Uh, and he's pretty close, but he had a few things that were too far gone. This thing's pretty rough. Everything is fixable to a point, but I, I don't think this is the one. He had one cab that was up here that it looked like a freaking asteroid hit it. I don't know what to say. It was completely wasted. You can see where all the panels come together. Water's been sitting in there and it's just rotted from the inside out. I nixed that. He showed me a few other things he had laying around, and I really think this 48 International, it's a KB8, I think this is a perfect candidate. This is the one we're using. The KB8 International that I ended up with came from Montana, and a pretty straight cab for a 1948. It reminds me very much of my childhood on the chicken farm. Uh, the first one we had was a similar body style, and I remember it well. So I'm excited about it, and I think it's going to be cool. Got a couple dents in the roof, but there's no cancer. Only a little surface rust. Looking around, he's got this KB-8. I liked it because there was no rot. Take a little hammering to get the roof back in the shape, but it looks good. I think this is the one. Doors operate smoothly. Dash is there. They've usually been picked, picked clean, but this is this is really sweet. It's got all the knobs, gauges. It's like super old school. It's, it's cool. It's 
pretty crazy how a truck this big would have such a tiny little cab. I mean, to have two big guys in here, you know, going to work on the farm or whatever they're doing, uh, not much room. It's all business in here. It's got the VIN number tags. It's legit. This is a good start. Seems like it's all here. Uh, there's pieces all over the place, but they all look good. Yeah, this is a really cool fender. Uh, I'm not familiar with the bigger international stuff in these early years. It's got some big giant headlights. And it's in good shape. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. No real rust, just a little weathering. I guess this is the donor chassis. He says it's in good working condition. The plus on this is it's got a low mileage, really powerful modern turbo diesel engine with an automatic transmission. It's just too big for my shop. We'll have to do it here. The fact that we have all the parts for this makes it a lot easier. Typically I have to try to find some stuff, but it's all here, so I'm ready to get down. This truck was not set up for anything like this. The engineers never imagined this for this vehicle. Everything I have done so far has been show car stuff, street car stuff. Building a cool custom truck is pretty much the same process, but the fact of this is it's got to be strong. It's got to be functional, and that's the challenge. Before I get started, I just wanted to get a quick look at how the cab looks sitting on the chassis. It's great to see the cab fit on the chassis. I really like the look of the original cab and I'm glad I didn't have to cut it up. The problem is, the 48 fenders are set up for a much narrower axle. I made some measurements. I'm gonna widen these fenders three inches on each side. I'm gonna weld them all together and then fit it up. I'm already committed to what I'm doing. We had the body off and laid it here and in a very, very short order, he was widening the fenders and I'm going, wow, how involved are we really gonna get the whole deal with how this thing is being widened is really just like putting, creating your own puzzle pieces. So I put the fenders where I wanted them and just put in this high cut piece of sheet metal to just make it happen. It seems like a huge deal just to get these things set up, but that's only the beginning. This is all preliminary steps. All the work I've done so far has been on the outside of the sheet metal. There's a lot of interior stuff, namely the engine and intercooler, radiator, they're huge. Since the thing's all in one piece now, I have to trim back all the excess sheet metal that's hanging around on the inside. My biggest concern with this build is the sheer size of it. It's a big truck, it's like eight feet wide. So I'm basically just gonna put it on there and we'll see how it looks. When I first walked in on this cab, I had my little grandson Lincoln with me and he oohed and awed about it and Ian liked that, I think. Might seem silly, but Bill's grandson is here, and having him to review my work really helps out. Everything I do, I like to have sort of a childlike quality, you know, like a big toy. He looks at it, and it's Tonka time. Straight up, let's play. I was stoked to get the cab and the nose up on the chassis. Everything looks like it's gonna work out. It fits good, it's gonna steer, I'm charged, I'm ready to go. When I saw the cab on the chassis for the first time, I went, oh yeah, this guy nailed it. This is an old GMC, looks like it's from the 40s. Whoa, look at this engine. 
That is what I'm talking about. We're at a truck show for the American Truck Historical Society. It's a pretty cool setup. We're working hard on Bill's truck. He's got some wild ideas for this project, so I came up here to one of their shows to check it out. It's pretty hard to know what to expect, so showing up here, you see that there's all different kinds of trucks, uh, different years, makes, models, etc. cetera. Uh, for me, it's the variety that's, that's really interesting. I love the older stuff, anything pre-1950, but you can't argue with the huge horsepower in the 1970s rigs. I just like the variety of things that's here. There's everything from an old camper truck over there that the guy is, it's like a 50 Ford pickup that he's just cut up and done all kinds of stuff to. Then right next to it is a like a 40s auto car that is a tow truck. So pretty impressive, the variety of things here, if you will. 33 Chevy pickup, and 33, you're all kinds of class in that thing. This is my pick, this is the one I'm taking home. I'm gonna get out my checkbook. This is my new shop truck. I don't know what the heck this thing is. I've seen one other like it, but it was a full body. I don't know if this has some relation Apparently they were made for GM, like at some point, maybe a World's Fair or some kind of promotional effort. This thing is amazing. One of the things I've been wanting to see for a long time are these displays of the weird engines you see. Steam engines, uh, kind of some kind of weird misfiring engines. They're, they're more for utility. One guy's got them hooked up to washing machines. Some guy's charging batteries over there. There's a drill press. I would love to do a project with one of those. That would be fun. I didn't need motivation to get excited about finishing my truck, but this definitely does it. If I could have it on the road next week, it would be great. Checking out all this stuff has been really cool. Bill's ideas have merit. I'm stoked. I was a little concerned when he told me his first plan, but this, his truck's got a brand new chassis under it. It's got the look of these older rigs, and it's full custom. Bill's got a cool old license plate he wants to use, and I got an idea on how to incorporate a special frame into the front bumper. The whole thing is it's super subtle like I'm all grown up. After checking out this show, it's obvious these guys take their stuff very seriously. I was thinking it might be some kind of hillbilly farm truck we were gonna make, but after seeing the level of detail on these rigs, we gotta push it, push it all the way. I think Ian was very inspired and liked it. The problem is, in my world, these are trailer queens. They put these trucks on big trailers and bring them. I'm going, what? I want a working truck. So we get this cab set up on the chassis, and it looks bitchin'. I'm really happy with it. Bill's big concern is getting access to this engine. He really likes the idea of the old school trapdoor style hood. I think we should just go bigger. The whole plan here is the nose of the truck, the hood, the side panels, the fenders, the bumper, the lights, the kitchen sink. The whole deal slides forward and gets out of your way. You wanna check the oil? There's nothing stopping you. Helped out on a build of a really cool truck. Showed Bill a bunch of pictures of it, and I think we could use the same formula for this. Just upsize everything. We need to get this so that it's a sliding mechanism. I'm thinking like trailer hitch stock. It's like, see how you got these two square telescopic tubes? Oh. If we just had some generic material. You know, I have some tube down there on the pipe rack that I want you to take a look at that might work for that. I think trailer hitch stock will be perfect. I thought I had all the parts for this build, but we didn't expect to make a tilt sliding nose. Bill's got a lot of stuff laying around here, so we're just gonna see if he's got what it takes. Now, 
Looks like he's got a bunch of trailer hitch stock laying up here. So this should work for the slider. He's got more than enough. I want to make this nose slide forward and pivot. I think the trailer hitch stock will be the perfect thing to make this work. That's the stuff, man. So my idea for the sliding tilt nose, I got this uh, trailer hitch receiver stock, and he has the, the interior section for that. See, it's different than the standard stuff because it's got rounded edges. So it slides on there pretty nice. I thought I'd take the rust off, but that seems like it acts as sort of a bearing. So uh, this will be incorporated to the truck frame, two of them parallel, and then I'll cut two sections of this off, and the whole nose will, will slide forward, and then there'll be pivots here. So it slides off of the front of the truck and then pivots up. It's a telescopic square steel tube. It's super strong. I have a feeling it's gonna work out perfect. All we need for this nose to tilt is a big ass hinge. <laughs> Straight up, it could be any way we find it. I have a, you know, I have a box of hinges here of different applications of different things we've done. The fact that these things need to be strong is critical. There's gonna be so much leverage. I can't even calculate how much leverage this nose is gonna put on the hinge pin. This style would work, because these have a very strong center pin. See, all these are just little stamped things, but something like this would be perfect, like a weldable hinge. I have the idea that gate hinges are pretty cool because they have little zerk fittings, you can grease them, there's a ball bearing in there, but if it comes down to it, a couple pieces of pipe will work too. Something like okay. that. These will totally work. They got little Zerk fittings. Yeah, those ball, were... um, Yeah, these are totally perfect. They got a little those ball are... bearing in there to help support it. I've done a bunch of tilt hoods on cars. I haven't used any hinges this strong, so all I could say is let's give it a try. What could possibly go wrong? After Ian got all the parts together to do the tilt, I, I get it now. It, it came through, and I understand what he's trying to do. He showed me another truck that he had tilted. But again, this is just a work truck, not a show truck. My whole deal is proving it by the work. I'm just going to bust this out, and I know he'll like it. Well, I got the two trailer hitch receivers set up. I was able to use the original bumper brackets, which is a huge time saver. The good thing about mounting off the original bumper brackets is this whole unit will be adjustable if you needed to reposition it. Say it got hit or loosened up or something. So this is the part that will actually hold the bumper and the entire skin of the nose of the truck. The whole idea is kind of like a trailer hitch in your car or truck. There's like a receiver, and then there's a piece that inserts into it. You can see here how they'll pivot. What I have to do now is create a cross brace that doesn't attach anything except the hinges so that the whole nose and bumper will rotate around this assembly. I have to widen this bumper no matter what. Bill's got a cool old license plate he wants to use, and I got an idea on how to incorporate a special frame into the front bumper. I guess the challenge is to find a piece that is strong enough to support the weight of the whole nose of the truck. The bumper's eight inches from top to bottom, so if there was like a C-channel eight inches, we could kind of French the license plate and uh, be super strong. We got six inch channel, which would fit, but well, that won't even fit. Huh. I'd say that looks like a license plate frame. I'll just cut the rear legs off of this I-beam, and then we have a surround. That's plenty strong. Some kind of piece of an old tractor. Recycle. The whole thing about using this big chunk of steel, for me, is the strength. 
This is the center of the entire mounting point of the nose. I know that I can make this thing work. The, the main feature is that it needs to be strong. The license plate happens to fit, and I think it's gonna work. One of the main things I do in building cars is reuse stuff. It's a challenge for me. I am frugal. If I don't have to buy material, I'm all about it. It's definitely the strongest license plate frame I'll probably ever make. The whole concept with reusing material is that it gives you something you couldn't have thought of in advance. That's my trip, man. That's what I like to do. Find something and make it work. This is gonna be a recessed shape for the license plate to hang out in. Uh, the bumper is uh, convex. It's curved on the front. The lip is about the same as this, about two inches, but then it, it curls forward. So I just left a lot of extra material out here so I can just put each side of the bumper welded in here and it'll be real strong. This grill is a little bent, so it's a little deceptive, but the whole framework is squared up with the body, so. I guess I'm gonna just cut the bumper right in half and just kind of fit it and see what it looks like. I want these guys to be an even left and a right, so I'm actually gonna just bolt them together through the holes and I'll make a scribe across so that the left and the right sides are equal. I'm just gonna tack this on. I'm gonna use this line as the uh, top edge and make it parallel with that. Just like backwards, sort of. That's the straightest crooked bumper I've ever seen. I'll take it. it doesn't have to be perfect. Just better be real good. It's a pretty cool idea because there was never a bumper this wide. None of those trucks had a French license plate. Nobody's got it like this. The whole thing is it's super subtle. It's like I'm all grown up. Today I brought the license plate down and he had, as he calls it, Frenched it into the bumper and fit perfect, looks perfect, is perfect. So some of my apprehension is going away. Yeah, I like your license plate. Yeah, it worked out Custom pretty good. Custom license plate. So the, uh, you know, the bumper's still kind of banged up, but you could, you could body work it. We'll fill it up yeah. a little bit, yeah. No, I think it looks great, man. Yeah. A lot of work, yeah. Yeah. I don't think Bill really wanted to go full bore with this truck, but my kind of crazy is contagious. After Bill saw that tilt bumper, he was all about it. This is more like it. Usually I'm laying on the ground underneath stuff. I feel a little more in my element. So all I'm gonna do here is we still have the hinge that's just floating. Uh, the big structure in the center is something I'm gonna tie into. I'm just gonna find some kind of a bar. Maybe I'll use the two inch stock we have and I'll just weld it on, cut those braces away and it should pivot. It's a pretty badass saw. This two inch tube is attaching uh, on the far end to that big center section that I made. It's super strong. And it's gonna come across, hit the tab on this hinge, and also hit the bumper itself. So it'll be like a three point bracket hidden inside. Puts a little more strength in the whole assembly because even though you can't see it because everything's squared, there's a lot of triangulation in here helps with moving forward and backwards and up and down. All right, so the last part of this is getting the sheet metal attached to the pivoting bumper. Uh, the truck was a little bit off level. I'm not sure what's going on there. So that could be in the suspension. Uh, all I did was put a floor jack under the axle and I got the whole bumper and the chassis leveled perfectly. Uh, fortunately, there was this car lift here, so I just attached 
piece of that to the uh, to the cross bracing and kind of strapped it off to the motorhome over there. Just got everything squared up. A little pushing and pulling, but now that it's in shape, centered, and level, uh, I'm gonna just build a frame at a two inch square, same stuff we've been using. I'm gonna make an arch that goes up underneath each side of the fender and then just build some kind of gusseting around that just to grab all the sheet metal so it doesn't get out of shape when it lifts. So you got this old bracing in here. My idea is to come back right near the slider there and then arch up around, grabbing that original brace and also having something up here in the top of the center of the fender. This truck was not set up for anything like this. The engineers never imagined this for this vehicle. So I'm just building like a whole new front of the frame, basically. Uh, it's a bunch of jigging up and making sure everything's square and then attaching it to the chassis so that it's strong and in line. So the whole idea is as this bumper's pivoting, this will pivot as well, but it'll offer support to the sheet metal. So I'm gonna do that on both sides, and then I'll follow up with those arch shapes. I've seen Bill come peeking around. You know, I've been hard at work. I think he's a little skeptical, but that only fuels the fire. That's making me want to make this happen. Yeah, the idea with using these curved pieces is by putting them through that machine, it makes them incredibly rigid with a lot of stress in it. So these, along with a few other gussets, will be the support of all the sheet metal inside. The way that this curve comes in is gonna be perfect. You see it intersects the original bracket in the fender. I can just trim that back, weld it up, and I'll make a miter joint down at the bottom here. It'll work out good. Once I built this subframe with sliders and all the armature to hold it, it was freaking heavy. It's gotta be incredibly strong. It's gonna have a huge amount of weight. The other times I pulled this off, there were cars. You could just grab it by hand and slide it. This is Big Bertha. <laughs> it's just heavy duty. This is too damn heavy. That's damn heavy. Tried to tilt it, wouldn't budge. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, now what? Once I got the under structure in place, I had to move on to the gravel pan. It was the last thing I needed to do to see if my idea was gonna work. The original truck has like this splash pan, gravel pan, whatever you wanna call it. It's like a trim sheet metal that goes between the bumper and the fenders. All right, so I'm gonna try to splice these pans in. Uh, the dimensions from the fender to the bumper are a little bit different. And there's no real reason to use these, except that I like the little design. It makes it look a little more old fashioned. The frame spot doesn't really match up as it did in the other one. I'm probably just gonna cut them in half and piece together what I can. It would have been 10 times easier to just take a piece of steel and fill in the area where the gravel pan is. It's little things like this gravel pan modification that are my signature. See, this got split in half before it was all taken apart. So this guy will just weld right up to the grill like that. I'll lap it onto the bumper, steam it in, cut it right through there, move it over. This little bump doesn't line up with the frame, so I'll probably just make a new shape to cover the frame that'll sort of represent what was there. All right, so we're gonna cut her up, weld her in, get her done. trying to use the original stuff because it's got these cool embossed ridges in it, and that's really gonna sell it. When somebody looks at it, it looks old, factory stock, but it's mutated, and that's really cool. There's a lot of work in getting this to fit, but it's worth it in the end, I know it.
something's happened with that fender in the past where it's all out of shape. So what I'm gonna do is just space these guys into the bumper so that they're the same distance. Uh, these bolt holes are a pretty good guide. I was able to pretty much just grab the fender and yank it and it's about quarter inch off. So I'm just gonna put a little pull on it. I'll put a temporary brace, weld the pan in and it matches. got the majority of the pans put in. You can see I still got to fab up these center pieces from where they split and got wider. Uh, but before I go any further, I just want to verify that this is all going to work. As soon as I got the majority of the gravel pan fabbed in, I just needed to see this thing tilt. This is the end of the mock-up. This is the moment of truth. Par for the course. All of this work, I finally get the thing ready to tilt, and it's stuck. Bill's standing right there. It's just perfect. It wouldn't move. It wouldn't move. And I went back to the, damn, it's so heavy, we can't do it. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, now what? When you got five million welds, your percentage of some attaching themselves to the cab, it's increased, so. In the end, that's what happened. The thing would not hinge open because it was welded shut. Like that. And it'll pivot up. Like that. There it is. You got a Ooh. tilt nose. <laughs> it is just awesome. Really cool. Everything I hoped it would be. Going for the KO, but I hung in there. I was bobbing, I was weaving, stuck in. Pulled it off. A lot of uh, blood, sweat, and tears by that young man right there. Once I got the hood tilt under structure and gravel pan in, I went on to the hydraulics. It's a pretty trick. Uh, just this one piston on one side slides the whole thing forward and then tilts it up. Uh, it's super simple hand-operated pump. They put this little pump back here behind the cab and it works just like a floor jack. It's slick. The great thing about this design is it doesn't rely on the truck engine to operate. It's totally manual. The truck breaks down, you can still open the hood. We talked about maybe motorizing this. But if the truck breaks down, you got no power, how do you open it? So he came up with this hand pump. It's pretty cool. And that's it, it stays open. It's pretty wild. Once we got this hydraulic pump in place, it operates smoothly. It works great. It took a little doing, but Bill's convinced. It works and it looks bitchin'. I'm just gonna disassemble the whole cab and take it off of the chassis. Uh, it's ready for bodywork, so I guess I'll just unbolt everything and catch up once it's in the bodywork. I wasn't looking forward to bodywork or paint on this, but just seeing Bill so excited, I knew it had to get done. This went further than I expected, and I had to sell the white truck that is my one and only roll-off truck uh, to fund this. So now we're kind of in an urgency to finish it. Just trying to get this thing as clean as possible. We really bondoed out almost the whole body. The roof was in horrible condition. And then uh, we went in and sanded everything inside and out, wire wheeled it. So I'm just gonna wipe off the last bit of the dust and primer it. I'll just primer this, then we'll set it back on the chassis and just make sure everything fits before we paint it. That way nothing chips when we assemble it. The whole idea with test fitting the body is to make sure that the procedure works. 
namely getting the thing up in the air with the forklift without screwing it up. And we wanted to check that the intercooler wasn't in the way of the nose when it's shut on the body. And all the gaps were good. Uh, once it's painted, you really can't modify anything, so it's important to test fit everything. Cool. Well, check out this intercooler. Let's see if it works. Because the nose of that truck cab is so much narrower than the later model donor we're using, I had to cut the tanks because the grill is very narrow. So I cut them, plated them, and then we ran into another problem where this corner was too wide still. So I cut a little diamond shape out of each side. Hopefully it fits. That's the really cool thing is it sits in the little saddle like somebody from the factory made it. All right, Captain, lower the drawbridge. Say, that's a nice truck you've got there. It's any little adjustments we have to do once it's painted, it's no sweat. You know, we'll be away from the paint. That's all I was worried about. It's such an intense project like this, it really helps when the original mechanical parts remain intact. With the intercooler, the steering, everything else mechanical, it really helps out in the end when it's all stock. We're just gonna do a few more coats of primer, sand, then paint it. After that, it's assemble and drive. I find it easier to just put like a whole bunch of stuff all over the table, and it's kind of like a, like a cooking show, you know? I don't really know what I'm doing, just as long as it's green, I'm gonna spray it. Put a little of that, shake of that, stir in some of that over medium heat and bake for 30 minutes. I think what I'm gonna do is just put a big heavy coat, first wet base coat on the roof and then I'll move over to the doors after I get the first coat on the cab. There's not one thing I would change on this truck. The thing I like most about it is the front view. Obviously, we know the fenders are widened, but you don't think that when you look at it. You just think, what a freaking big truck. We got this thing painted. Assembled, this truck is clean. I mean, it's really badass. I wish I could drive it. The cool factor is that it's super subtle. The few people who've seen it are just blown away. Just because it looks like a stock truck. I mean, it's, it's hard to tell. And you do the special hood, and you show them what's going on. And it's cool. I can't wait to take this thing to a show. The thing I like most about it is the front view. Obviously, we know the fenders are widened, but you don't think that when you look at it. You just think, what a freaking big truck. There's not one thing I would change on this truck. I love everything about it. A lot of that is due to Ian and his persistence and his fabrication. My job was all the heavy fabrication and assembly, and then Bill got down on all the accessories and finishing parts. He polished out all the stainless steel, got some bitchin' aluminum rims, got the special mirrors, the chrome horns, the air cleaner. I mean, he knows what a truck needs to be legal on the road, so he fitted out with everything DOT approved and all the trick cool looking stuff too. Oh, the best thing is, the, of course, the tilt front end that I was very apprehensive about. You know, it's just awesome. I mean, I've showed it to people and they go, really, how does that work? Well, works like this, and you just pump this hydraulic jack, and it tilts and goes out. But people that are not even car or truck people are very like, wow, it's just something way different. And that, of course, is the best part, and that it's, it still has the old look. When it's rolling down the road, you, you can't tell the front tilts like that. But when you stop and you tilt it, cool. The cool factor 
it's like, it, it's a real question mark. That's the whole thing. It's people look at it and guys who know trucks are like, there was no roll off trucks in 1948. I think Ian is, time has gone along and I've done the little things that I've done to it, he now gets that it's going to be a working truck. I don't think he really got that before because he's never built anything like this. It's mostly show cars and toys. It's a show truck and it's a toy, but it's a working all of that. It's a, a multi-functioning truck It'll function as a flatbed truck, a dump truck, a van, does everything. And uh, that is the beauty of that truck. Yeah, I just use it mainly as a toy. If my wife were here, she'd say it's an expensive toy, which that's okay. Uh, it pays for itself and I have fun and that's what life is. But the truck itself works perfectly. I'm very happy, I'm very happy with it turned out great. In the end, I mean, Bill is stoked. He's super happy about it, and I'm jealous. That means it's a good project.